So welcome to the end of chapter five. Uh, chapter five was about probability distributions. In the first section, we defined a probability distribution. In the second section, we introduced the idea of a particular kind of probability distribution for binomial probability distribution where you had a repeated number of trials and you had either success or failure in each case. And we had a binomial distribution. And so the last section of chapter five that we'll introduce today is about the Poisson probability distribution. So again, it's a particular kind of a probability distribution and we're going to introduce that and um, look at what kind of problems this helps with. So a key concept. In this section, we introduce Poisson probability distributions, which are another category of discrete probability distributions. So again, what did that mean? Discrete, the discrete aspect for a probability distribution means the output of the random variable X is a discrete value. Often it's whole number possibilities. So for example, if I'm flipping a coin and I'm counting up how many heads I get, that's a discrete, a discrete distribution because I can only get finite whole number countable values. I can't get three and a half heads or something like that. So for the Poisson probability distribution, we are again looking at variable output results that are uh, finite countable, not a continuum. So let's define it. A Poisson probability distribution is a discrete probability distribution that applies to occurrences of some event over a specified interval. The random variable X is the number of occurrences of the event in an interval. The interval can be time, distance, area, volume, or some similar unit. So again, when they give you this sort of broad definition without any specifics, it's sometimes hard to wrap your mind around it. So let's, let me give you a simple example, example to help us think about it. And then also to compare uh, and contrast with uh, you know, a binomial distribution or other probability distributions. So we still have a discrete variable. So the kind of things we talked about is like flipping, flipping a coin. So in the past, for example, when we were looking at flipping a coin, I might say, I flipped a coin 10 times and I don't talk about how long it took or anything like that. And there's no interval involved. It's just the, a procedure which was repeated 10 times or something like that. Now, instead you could say, what if I'm flipping a coin and I'm just keep flipping it over some period of time? some interval of time, like over a course of an hour or something like that. So you could imagine that I, instead of looking at 10 flips of the coin and counting how many of them were heads, I could imagine flipping a coin for an hour and discussing how many times I got heads over the course of that hour, or maybe a minute or whatever is appropriate for the context of the problem. So I still have something where there's a discrete possible results, like how many times did I get heads when I flipped for an hour? Maybe it was 87 or something like that. It'd still be some discrete number, but I'm talking about the procedure being repeated over time uh, instead of just counting a number of occurrences of a procedure. So that's an example. That would be a Poisson probability distribution. So let's... Uh, explore this a little further. And again, if anyone has a question at any time, just uh, feel free to speak up or type it into chat for me now. So here is a formula, which we are immediately going to ignore. <laughs> um, I mean, you don't have to, you can certainly work some of these by hand, but I've been trying to de-emphasize formula use and rely on technology. So we will be calculating Poisson probabilities in StatCrunch, or you can use another type of technology if you prefer, as opposed to using this formula. And so for that reason, I'm gonna skip right by it. But let's look at the requirements for a Poisson probability distribution. 
And remember, for comparison and contrasting, there were requirements for a binomial distribution as well. And so in each of these sections, they're describing you what it's like to have one of these kinds of distributions for probability. And then when you see a real world situation, you can ask yourself, which kind of a probability distribution do I have by seeing if the situation described meets the requirements you need to meet for each particular kind of probability distribution. So what are they for a Poisson probability distribution? Number one, the random variable X is the number of occurrences of an event in some interval, like how many times did I flip the coin and get heads over an hour? The occurrences must be random, and that was true for binomial distributions as well. So it's not like at the end of the hour, I do something differently to have a better chance to get heads than I did at the beginning. The getting the heads or tails is completely random throughout the entire interval. The occurrences must be independent of each other. So not only are they random over the interval, but it's not like after 10 times of getting heads, I'm gonna to try to do something to stop that. The chance of getting heads on the 11th try is independent from the chances on any other attempts. The occurrence, occurrences must be uniformly distributed over the interval being used. So the idea is if I'm flipping a coin for an hour, I'm not gonna flip it five times faster for the first half hour and then flip it very slow for the second half hour or something like that. So the idea is that the occurrences are randomly occurring, evenly distributed in terms of the pace of events or things like that over the interval being discussed. So again, these are a little bit broad. I tried to use an example of flipping coins over time, but we'll really feel more comfortable with this, hopefully as we see more examples to illustrate the ideas. Uh, any questions so far? All right, so what are the variables involved? What are the statistics that we're talking about here? So parameters of the Poisson probability distribution. So reminder from our chapter one vocabulary, the word parameter is a data value from an entire population as opposed to a statistic, which is a data value from a sample of a population. And the letters or the variable symbols we use for parameters usually are these Greek letters. So there's the mean value, there's this mu symbol, that one. And then for the standard deviation, there's that sigma symbol. And all that means is that they are talking about the mean and standard deviation for the entire population being considered. All right, so the parameters are the mean is we're using a mu symbol. But it tells us that the standard deviation, instead of having its own sort of complicated formula, which we've had in the past, comparing all the different data values, the standard deviation for a Poisson distribution is just the square root of the mean. Very simple. If the mean is 100, the standard deviation is 10. If the mean is 36, the standard deviation is 6. So the standard deviation is very easily calculated from the mean and it's all you need to know. It doesn't, the calculation itself doesn't use all the data values, even though they're used in the mean, they're, they're not involved in the formula with the mean to get the standard deviation. Again, StatCrunch will just tell us these things. But for example, if they give us a problem where they tell you the mean and they ask the standard deviation, you could just take the square root and that's it. More properties of the Poisson probability distribution. A particular Poisson distribution is determined only by the mean. And that's because the standard deviation is also determined by the mean. A Poisson distribution has possible X values starting with zero. It didn't occur at all. One, two, all the way up to infinity with no upper limit. So the idea is that if I say, how many times did I flip a coin over an hour and get heads? Well, what determines the theoretical limit onto how many times I can get heads? 
Well, I mean, there's a practical limit, like how many times can I physically do it? But for example, if you have some computer flipping heads sort of electronically in milliseconds, then you could have an enormously high number of heads achieved theoretically in an hour. And it's as computer powers get stronger and stronger, that value just grows and grows. So even though real world situations may provide limits as to how many times the X variable could come up with a, a result of an actual number. Um, the idea is that theoretically there's no necessary upper limit. Whereas if I'm doing a binomial distribution where I flipped a coin 10 times, that's a hard limit of 10 heads because there was a limit as to how many times I performed the procedure. So this will help to distinguish between binomial distributions or a Poisson distribution. For example, if a problem should pop up on your quiz on chapter five and you have to kind of figure out which distribution to use. Now, the truth is I think for the Poisson distributions, most of the problems I saw, they tell you to use a Poisson distribution to make life simpler for you. Um, but nonetheless, this is uh, a property that you wanna be aware of for a Poisson uh, distribution. So that's a big thing to think about. The entire distribution, once you have the circumstances of a Poisson distribution, all you need to know is the mean. So here's an example with five slides. For the 55 year period since 1960, there were 336 Atlantic hurricanes. Assume the Poisson distribution. So we are assuming that this is a random variable X, which is discrete, which in this case is the getting a having a hurricane or not. And the interval of time is a year because they've given that to be the default time interval. And the entire time that you're doing that is 55 years. So it says find mu, the mean number of hurricanes per year then to find the probability that in a randomly selected year, there are exactly eight hurricanes. That's P parentheses eight or a piece of eight, where P of X is the probability of X Atlantic hurricanes in a year. All right, so um, they're gonna look at this, but let's talk about it together while we're in a position of reading the problem fresh. So are there questions about the statement of the problem or the description of this example of a Poisson distribution? So you can ask about, ask to yourself, does it fulfill these four conditions, these four requirements, I should say? And of course it does, because it says use Poisson distribution, but you can try to think about what each of these things are saying in relation to that specific example. Independence, is there some reason to think one hurricane affects another hurricane? Are they uniformly distributed? Does it just seem randomly that a hurricane could happen, you know, anywhere during the year? Well, it might be if you were had a time period that was down to months, then maybe that condition wouldn't feel that that was met properly. Maybe some months where it's you know storm season, you have a more high likelihood of a hurricane. But when you have a whole year, then one year to the next, some years will have more, some years will have less, but one year is a full seasonal cycle. And that suggests that there's a uniform distribution from year to year of hurricanes. So again, this is context is everything. All right, so then could we calculate the mean? The first task for us is to find the mean. And it says specifically the number of hurricanes per year, the mean number of hurricanes per year. Well, keep in mind, what is a mean? It's an arithmetic average in that you add them all up and divide by how many there were. So what we're adding all up is the number of hurricanes over the years and dividing it out per year by how many years there were. And so they've already told us that the total for all that time was 336. That's the total. And that this is how many years that was over. So the mean value would just be the total number of hurricanes 
divided by the total number of years, and that would be the mean number of hurricanes per year. Questions about that? So this is kind of an important for a Poisson distribution because as we were just discussing, the entire Poisson distribution is determined once you know the mean. So I could divide this out. Looks like this is gonna go in six and a little times. I'm gonna just say approximately six. And then of course I could get a better a uh, decimal version of that. Uh, six times 55 is 330. And so uh, there's going to be some decimal, or maybe I'll even do this just because everybody loves fractions. I'll say that this is equal to six and six fifty fifths. That's the exact value of the mean. But they're probably going to want it as a decimal. And so let's see what they do in the coming four slides. For the 55 year period since 1960, there were 336 Atlantic hurricanes, assume the Poisson distribution. Oh, they're actually giving us another thing to do. I didn't see that. So they gave us A and B as goals, find the mean, find the probability, and then they want to find something else. How does this actually result? How does this actual result compare to the probability found in part B? So in part B, they want us to find the probability of having eight hurricanes in a particular year. And then they say that there were five years in which they actually had eight hurricanes and they want you to compare the actual results to the Poisson prediction of the likelihood. And then it asks, does the Poisson distribution appear to be a good model in this case? All right, so they begin with the mean, I assume. So for part A, as I was just describing, and they just looks like got it to one decimal place, um, that if you divide the total number of hurricanes over the entire time interval line of 55 years, you get 6.1, and that again is hurricanes per year. So meaning that on average or the mean value is that over that 55 year period, on average, they had five hurricanes a year or six hurricanes every year. <laughs> yeah, lots of Atlantic hurricanes. All right, so then for part B, they want us to calculate some probabilities and they use a formula for that. And as I'm going to reiterate, we are going to avoid the formula and hope that we could just put this on stat crunch and get this value. And of course, I will take us to StatCrunch uh, after looking at the slides a little bit more um, in order to illustrate that. So the result turned out to be that for a particular year where the average was six, a little more than six hurricanes, the probability of having eight hurricanes, which would be above the mean, is a little over 10%, almost 11%. So basically the idea is that there's about 11% probability of eight hurricanes in a year. Because again, remember the mean value is just what it averaged out to be. Some years there might be more, some years there might be less. It means out or averages out to about six. But easily, you could have some years where you have as many as eight. In fact, there's about an 11% likelihood of that happening. OK, so part C is designed to help you understand the ideas that we're talking about here. The probability of having eight hurricanes occur in a year turned out to be 10.7% from part B. That's the likelihood in a particular year that you would get eight hurricanes. In 55 years, the expected number of years with eight uh, hurricanes would be the number of years times the probability in one year of getting a hurricane, meaning that when you have a whole bunch of years, if the chance is 10.7% of getting a hurricane, of getting eight hurricanes, then in about 10.7% of those years, we would expect 
eight hurricanes. So if we multiply the probability from the Poisson distribution times the number of years that were looked at, you get 5.9 years as an expected number of years that would result in eight hurricanes. And that's reasonably close to the actual observed amount, which was five of those 55 years had eight hurricanes. And so they're concluding the Poisson model appears to work pretty well. So the idea there is, can you recognize what the Poisson distribution probability is telling us? So when a Poisson distribution for a particular result, like eight hurricanes, has a certain percentage of likelihood, then that means over some rep repetition of the intervals of time, in this case years, then about that percentage of the time, you would expect the result to come out, in this case, with eight hurricanes. And you can multiply the percentage of time times the quantity of time to see what portion of that quantity would have the expected value in this case, eight hurricanes. Questions at all? So I guess the last thing we'll take a peek at here, this is not a long section. There aren't too many slides even, there's only 18 slides. It's really just about this idea of a Poisson distribution. So it says the Poisson distribution is sometimes used to approximate a binomial distribution when n is large. So when n is large, meaning you flip a number of coin, a coin a whole bunch of times, not just 10, but maybe a thousand or something. Well, then it's so many and it goes to the point where those extreme results are so unlikely, like you're going to get a thousand heads. You know, that's, uh, that's a low likelihood. Um, that really you could basically treat that like a Poisson distribution. And the benefit of that is that a Poisson distribution, all you need to know is the mean. You only need to know the mean. So they're saying that if you're going to do this, you would want the number of trials in a binomial distribution to be more than 100, greater than or equal to 100, and that you would want the probability of the event you're looking at, like flipping a coin would be 50%. You'd want the probability times the number of trials to come out less than 10. So that's not the case for flipping a coin because 50% times 100 would be 50. So the idea is if you're thinking about something that is not a very big likelihood that happened many times, then in those circumstances, the math for a Poisson distribution basically comes out the same as a math for a binomial distribution. And of course, the mean would be the probability times the number of times you did it would be the expected or mean value for the results. And then you could use that for your mean for your Poisson distribution. So I think they'll do an example of that. In the main pick four game, let's say lotto game, you pay 50 cents to select a sequence of four digits, such as 1377. If you play this game once every week, find the probability of winning at least once in a year with 365 days. I said every week for some reason, but it's every day. In a year with 365 days. So this is technically a binomial distribution because you have 365 trials and you have yes or no whether you won. Um, but you could treat this like a Poisson distribution because it's also over a period of time. Now in this case there isn't theoretically an unlimited number of possible successes because you are, uh, this is a binomial distribution, you are fixed to doing it once a day, so there are 365 fixed trials. But again, the number of trials is over 100 and the probability of winning is going to be low. <laughs> uh, so let's see how that they, they show, write this out. Because you have, you have to pick the correct of four digits. And as you can imagine, that's one out of 10,000 possibilities from our probability chapter. And so if I multiply that by 365, uh, I'm not expecting to win 10 times, which is the second requirement, uh, which is this requirement that I was saying. If you take the probability of the occurrence times the number of trials, you need to be something small. So the probability in this case, P is one over 10,000. 
times that by 365, um, you're not expecting to win 10 times on any day. Okay, so they walk us through this. The time interval is a day and playing once each day results in 365 games. There is one winning set of numbers among the 10,000 that are possible. So the probability of a win is one out of 10,000. The number of trials is 365. The conditions that the number is greater than 100, greater than or equal to 100, and the um, expected number of successes is less than or equal to 10 are both satisfied. So we can use the Poisson distribution as an approximation to the binomial distribution. We first need the value of the mean, which is found by taking the 365 days and dividing by the likelihood of a success, n times p, and you end up getting um, a small number. <laughs> so having found mu, they can plug that into the formula. And it says, we want to find the probability that x is at least 1. So uh, going back to our probability chapter, the probability of at least one, it means the probability of getting one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way up to 365. You'd have to get all those probabilities and add them up to get the probability of getting at least one. But instead, we would find the condition to that, I'm sorry, the complement to that, the probability that you never won, and then subtract that from one. Now, again, we don't have to do any of this because we're going to do all this in StatCrunch. <laughs> so they do this formula. So they get the probability. Um, they say we find P sub zero because we're going to find that and subtract that from one to get the complement. We find P sub zero by using the formula and they get like 96%. So according to this, the probability of never winning over the whole year is 96%. And so the probability of winning once is three and a half percent, three point six percent. And they compare that to the actual binomial distribution result and it came out exactly the same to four digits. So the Poisson distribution was a very good approximation for the binomial distribution in this example. And that's the last slide. So really we want to just get comfortable recognizing what a Poisson distribution is and then how to use StatCrunch as a tool to do problems on the homework and things like that. Any questions about any of these slides before I hop over and take a look at an example homework problem? Looking at our list here, as we can see, we finished chapter four and here's our homework number six and our quiz six due Sunday. But before those, we have the practice exam for Proctorio and we have our midterm because the midterm is Thursday and I've already Explain this, the midterm is on the 11th. It says the 13th here, which would be Saturday. The test is not Saturday, it's Thursday. So be ready to take it Thursday in the window specified on Canvas and in the syllabus. All right, but let's take a look at the homework. So for section three, we need to have problems in the last third here. So let's take a look at maybe number 30. Oops. All right, so it says in a recent year, a hospital had 40,121 births, find the mean number of births per day, then use the result and the Poisson distribution to find the probability that in a day there are 13 births. Does it appear likely that on any given day there will be exactly 13 births? Now, uh, we can see that this is a 5.3 problem just because of the label from 5.3 here. We can also see that this is a Poisson distribution problem because it, it says use the Poisson distribution to find the probability. So in this case, we don't have to worry about requirements. We just need to be able to do it. Any questions about the statement of the problem before I illustrate uh, how we would do it using StatCrunch to help us? All right, so first we want to find the mean. And remember, the mean is just the total number of occurrences over the total time period. So in this case, I'd be doing the mean by doing 4,121 births and the 
time period is births per day for the mean and the number of days uh, since those births were over a year, says in a recent year, the days in the year will be 365. So that is the mean value. Now it says to round this to one decimal as needed. So I'm gonna just grab my handy Windows calculator and I'm gonna do 4121 divided by 365. And to one decimal place, looks like that would be 11.3 because I have to round the two up to a three in the first decimal place. So let's bump that over, move that to a three. So then it says we want the probability using a Poisson distribution that on a particular day, there are 13 births. Okay, so to do that, we want to go into StatCrunch instead of using that ugly little formula. You could use the formula, but it does it in StatCrunch. And StatCrunch, uh, for example, makes it so you don't have to worry about complements or any of those things as the problems become more, more um, confusing or difficult. And so the, we, you really want to use some technical tool, StatCrunch being my recommendation um, for this problem. And I'm just going to grab some of this because we do want the mean and stat crunch. And maybe we could be happy. I assume if they ask you to round it to one place, then in the formula, one place rounded off should give you the accuracy that they want here, which is to three decimals. But I don't know. I'm going to take more accuracy to be safe. At least I think I'm being safe. Now, we don't have any data given in this problem. So we're not going to open a data set in stat crunch. There's just a description of the problem, but we do want to use StatCrunch. So the quickest way to do that is to go to question help. And of course, you could do the help me solve this or view an example to have them show you step by step how to do the problem. But then also, of course, they're not going to use StatCrunch when they show you how to do it. They're going to use the formula like they did in the slides. So I can just open StatCrunch from here without any data at all. And let me shrink this down a little bit. So now that I have stat crunched open, how do I get a Poisson distribution calculator? So I'm going to go to stat calculators and it's right down here, Poisson. And we were in here in the first, in 5.1, we went to custom when we had a custom probability distribution. In 5.2, we went to binomial when we had a binomial distribution. And now in 5.3, we are on in the Poisson. So I go to Poisson. And what you'll see is for the Poisson calculator, it looks a lot like the binomial distribution. For each independent outcome of the random variable, they're showing the probability that that one will occur. So this is a lot like the binomial calculator. And that's why under certain circumstances, you can use this one instead of a binomial calculator. But if you have calculators for both, not much reason. Now, what is the default here? They have a default mean of 10 and they have a probability calculation of getting less than or equal to 10. So those are all highlighted 10 down through zero. So what do we need to do? We need to put in our mean value because the mean for this problem is not 10, it's 11 something. And I'm gonna, I copied that from the calculator so that I'd have plenty of accuracy in there. And we want the probability that in a day there are 13 births. So instead of getting that there are less than or equal to 10, I want the probability that it comes out equal to 13. So I change those to 13 with that mean and I hit compute. And the graph supports this. So this is in red highlighting the 13 occurrences. And this is the probability of having 13 births on a particular day. So they want that to three decimal places, which is to the seven, which I don't need to round up. And that's what they're asking. So before we look at whatever their C is, questions? about how I used the Poisson distribution calculator to determine the probability of a particular number of occurrences on a particular day. All right, 
So then it says, does it appear likely that on a given day there will be exactly 13 births? So how do we determine what likely is? We had some, we had some choices that were defined uh, sort of significantly low was like under 5%. So what are our choices? They have likely and not unlikely. I'm sorry, unlikely or not unlikely. They don't actually have likely. They just have not unlikely, which is good because that's simpler. The unlikely is 5% or less. That's our default. So since this is above 5%, we would choose the not unlikely option. And that's because the probability is greater than 5%. Questions about any part of this problem? So maybe we'll try one more. We have about 13 minutes left. Um, I think I'll skip one more. All right, let's take a look at this one, see how much work this is. So notice very short here. I'm gonna leave up my tool here because it's gonna be the same tool I'm imagining. It says for number 32 from the homework, in a recent year, an author wrote 151 checks. Use the Poisson distribution to find the probability that on a randomly selected day, he wrote at least one check. So this one is like the one we saw on the slides where the at least one means one or more. And so the extreme case would be that he wrote all 151 checks on one day in the year and all the other days he didn't write any. But of course, that's not what we would expect, <laughs> that they'd be kind of spread out. But to get the probability of writing at least one, it would be one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to 151. And you'd have to add all those up. So normally you would do a complement and find the complement to getting zero. But we could do that here, but we can actually just tell the calculator what is the probability of getting greater than or equal to one. <laughs> and so that's why um, we don't even have to worry about this idea of complement because the calculator will automatically give us any range of values or any, any we, we could even do a range of values, like what's the probability that he wrote between two to seven checks on a particular day. By switching to between, then we could even put a range of values. So the calculator makes it so easy. We don't have to worry about that complement concept from chapter four because we're not using the formula. Now I do need to put in the correct mean for this new problem, but that's all you need for a Poisson distribution is the mean. And as we saw before, I can just use a calculator and get the mean by dividing the number of checks divided by the number of days in the year because we're talking about a particular day and the checks were over a year. So that would be 151 checks written over 365 days. So the mean value of checks per day is little less than a half a check per day. And I'm just gonna grab a bunch of these decimals here just for some good accuracy and put in that mean into my Poisson calculator. So now I've got the correct mean in for the situation, 151 checks over 365 days. So that's the mean number of checks per day. The question is, what is the probability of getting at least one, which would be one or more? So I'm calculating the probability that the result for a day is greater than or equal to one, and I compute. And you can see that they're highlighting one, two, three, and they stopped showing at four, even though this could go up to 151, because very quickly they get tiny. You can look, you can see that there's over a 60% probability that um, on a given day that he didn't write any checks at all. <laughs> all right, but here's the probability. We want one or more on a day and they want that to three decimals. So that's 0.338 rounded up to 0.339. And that's all they wanted for this problem. 